Hi, this is Peter from the DJ Podcast. In this video, we're going to look at how you can use the Touch OSC Editor to create custom Touch OSC layouts for Touch OSC running on your iOS device. Before you add any controls to your layout, you want to make sure that the layout itself is set up correctly. You want to go over to the menu on the left and select the correct size for the device that you're using. By default, it's set to iPhone, iPod, and Touch. But if you're using an iPad, you want to make sure that you select iPad from the drop down menu, as this will give you much more space to add controls. Also, you want to make sure that you know what orientation you're going to be using your device. If you want the device to be standing up vertically, you can leave it to the default orientation of vertical. But if you are going to be rotating your device and using it as a horizontally oriented screen, you want to make sure that you go and set the orientation to horizontal. Now that you have your layout set up correctly, it's time to add a control. To add a control, simply right click in the empty space on your layout. Then, select the type of control that you want from the drop down menu. Now that we have a control, we can hover over any of these points and resize in that particular direction. You can also click and drag the control to freely move it around in the space of your layout. If you want, you can enable a grid by simply going up to this option here and enabling the grid. This will allow you to snap your controls to the grid with both the position and size. Now that we have added some controls to our layout, let's take a look at the settings available for each control. On the left, you'll see that we have all of the options for the control that we currently have selected. The first option is name, and this is automatically generated when you add a control. But if you are doing really complex mappings, you may need to go ahead and name this something. So if you want, you could say that this would be deck one play. Also, you can change the color for each control by simply going down to the color drop down menu. Right now it's set to red, but if I wanted to change it to say gray, I could simply go down and select gray. Underneath color, you have X and Y. This is the position of the control in your layout. Also, you have W and H, width and height, and that represents the size of your control. Before you can actually use your custom layout, you need to assign each control a MIDI command. You can do this by selecting the control, then going over to the MIDI tab and enabling MIDI by using this checkbox. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. For knobs, buttons, and faders, you want to make sure that your variable is set to X. Then, you're going to want to make sure that you change the corresponding values depending on the type of control that you're using. So if you're going to use a knob or a fader, you want to set the type to control change. You're going to leave the range at 0 to 127, and then you're going to use a unique number in the number field. For a push button, you're going to do a very similar thing. You're going to set the variable to X, but this time you're going to change the type to note. You'll leave the velocity at 0 to 127, and then you will assign a unique note in the note field. For a multi-fader or multi-button, you're going to do the same thing as you would with a symbol control. This time though, you're going to have multiple X variables. Don't forget to assign each to its own unique note or number. If you'd like to spend more time adding MIDI commands to your controls, please check out the advanced documentation over at hexler.net. Thanks for watching this video on how to create custom Touch OSC layouts using the Touch OSC editor. For more videos on Touch OSC, please visit thedjpodcast.com.